today i am going to start a new chapter which is called beam uh, at the beginning i will be giving a lecture on introduction to flexual member and beam is basically a structural member which is subjected to transverse loading that means the load perpendicular to its axis and because of this transverse loading the member produces bending moment as well as shear force so when we will be going to design we have to design against bending moment and against shear force now uh, in a uh, in an anatomy of a structure uh, or a building system we have seen that apart from uh, compression member or column tension member uh, the beam are also existing and beam is an important member in the structural system which carries load uh, which are basically transverse load and uh, the loads from the uh, superstructure uh, which are coming to the column it comes mainly from the floor and floor to beam and then beam to column so we need to know how to design the beam against such type of forces like bending moment and shear force not only that in case of steel structure we will see the beam is not only uh, fail due to bending or due to shear but also fail due to lateral buckling due to local buckling due to torsional um, moment so many things will come into picture why uh, we have not studied these things in case of rc structure because in case of rc structure generally we provide uh, rectangular section uh, whereas such type of problems will not come but in case of steel structure we provide certain roll section where the uh, thickness of the member is quite less means say for example i section the thickness of the plane thickness of y wave is quite less so there will be chances of different type of buckling local buckling of the plane of the wave uh, which we need to take care so all these aspects will be di discussed in this chapter so coming to a picture here we can see that uh, this is called a beam generally these are the beam this is a channel section which are used and here also you can see this is a horizontal section this is a beam this is a beam and uh, some beams are connected to another beam uh, where we call this is a secondary beam and this is a primary beam so um, secondary beam um, are rested on the primary beam and in case of uh, bridge structure we oftenly uh, tell that garter uh, and these bridge structures are used means are designed uh, considering beam as a plate garter where the garter dimensions are decided on the uh, basis of the bending moment and other uh, forces so in case means though we call this beam but this beam members are named different way at different places like when uh, like a joist a closely spaced beams supporting floors or roofs of building but not supporting of the other beams this is called joist so sometimes we the beam are named as joist garter we call when a large beam used for supporting a number of joist so in, in previous example we can see uh, that that this is called a garter this is supported by the cross cross beam this is supported by the secondary beam so these structural members the flexural members are called different way in different places like purlin purlin also we call when it is used to carry roof loads in trusses when the purlin means roof trusses are there then purlins are provided so uh, those beams are called purlin when it is carrying the roof load and in building beam supporting stair steps 
or in a bridge a longitudinal beam supporting deck floors and supported by floor beam are called stringer and a major beam supporting other beams in a building and also the transverse beam in bridge are called floor beam. So, we though we call different name, but we will see in case of design we will design as a flexural member. So, mem design procedure will be same for all the cases, but their names are different to identify the use of different beam members in different places like spandrel beam. In a building a beam or on the outside perimeter of a floor supporting the exterior walls and outside edge of the floor is called spandrel beam and a horizontal beam spanning the wall of columns of industrial building used to support wall coverings is called guard and rafter is a basically roof beam when supported by purlins. So, rafter is a roof beam supported by purlins and linton we, we have already come across through RCC design that is the this type of beams are used to support the loads from the masonry over the openings means when say suppose a window is windows are there then we provide here uh, certain lintel to uh, carry the load on uh, in this place. So, this is called lintel. Now, nature of forces acting on beam if we see that basically the nature of the force is transverse load. In beam the transverse load load are subjected to the member and all load loads and sections lie in the plane of symmetry. That means, say suppose a I section is there. Now, when loads are coming across its cross section it is considered that it is a symmetric loading. That means, that there is no twisting and it follows that such a beam will be primarily subjected to bending accompanied by shear in the loading plane with no external torsion and axial force. Though in case of beam the axial uh, force may come into picture sometimes and sometimes torsion also will come into picture because of unsymmetrical loading, uh, but generally we used to tell beam as a member when only the symmetric transverse load are acting on the member. So, in case of only symmetric uh, in case of only transverse loading the member is called beam and designed accordingly. So, if we see uh, say suppose a beam is having certain load then it goes deflection like this and it has it produce certain bending moment and it produce certain shear force. So, the primary objective to design the beam against this bending moment and shear force. Now, the torsion cannot completely be avoided in a beam if even if the beam is symmetrical beam shape is symmetrical and load are also in plane of symmetry. That means, suppose a I section say it is a symmetrical I section now load also are symmetric if it happens in such case also means if the loads are also in plane of symmetry and beam shape is also in symmetrical position then also uh, torsion may come into picture. This is because the instability. Uh, the instability caused by the compressive stresses. Uh, the reason I am reading once again the reason is the instability caused by the compressive stresses. So, such instability is defined as lateral buckling right and when it is involved only local components of a beam it is called local buckling. So, uh, while going for design of a beam member we have to see whether it is going for means whether we need to design for lateral buckling and local buckling. And this local buckling is a function of width to thickness ratio. So, depending on the width to thickness ratio the local buckling will be considered. 
So, if we see the mode of failure as I told that mode of failure will be basically three type of failure primarily will come one is bending failure another is shear failure and another is deflection failure. Bending failure generally occurs due to crushing of the compression flange or fracture of the tension plane because if we uh, draw the bending moment diagram means because of certain load. So, bending moment diagram will be like this that means tension will develop at the bottom and compression will develop at the top of this such case and uh, crushing of the compression flange will occur uh, uh, because of the load and uh, fracture of the tension flange will happen. So, this type of failure may happen. So, if we see uh, along the depth of cross section the stress strain stress will vary like this. So, here it will be compression here will be tension. So, the extreme fiber of the member at top will be under compression and it may undergo crushing failure and uh, the extreme bottom of the member will be under tension and it may fail due to fracture of tension flange. Similarly, shear failure may come into picture and this occurs due to buckling of the wave of the beam near location of high shear forces because uh, uh, we know the if we see the bending moment diagram of such type of loading we will see the shear force diagram will be like this. So, maximum shear force will be developed at the support and the beam can fall, um, fail locally due to crushing or buckling of the wave near the reaction or concentrated load. Right. So, this is another failure which we need to take care. Another failure may occur due to deflection, excessive deflection. So, we need to design the beam to have adequate strength, but it may not be suitable if the uh, if it is it is having excessive deflection. So, uh, excessive deflection will uh, make discomfort to the user. Therefore, we need to restrict the deflection also. So, the code has provided certain deflection criteria that means, limiting deflection of, uh, of the beam. So, when we are going to design the beam, uh, we have to also check the design criteria, uh, deflection criteria. That means, the section whatever we are going to choose under a certain load, whether it is under permitted deflection or not that has to be checked. If not, if deflection is excessive, then section may not fail, but we have to redesign the section to make it uh, under limit state of serviceability. That means, from serviceability criteria we have to fulfill the uh, permissible limit also. Now, type of steel section. So, in case of beam we may use different type of sections say one is say solid section we can use right and different type of um, roll section like channel section we can provide again thin walled open section rolled open section i section can be provided right this is thin walled open section and sometime fabricated i sections also provide means we have provided means we have considered a plate then we have fabricated means we have welded here we have welded with other plates and this will be the this is called fabricated I section. This is used frequently to fulfill the requirement and sometimes we provide the thin wall closed section also this is something like this these two plates are fabricated like this. So, uh, we make welded connections here and this is called thin wall closed section this is also called box section. So, box section can be used sometimes angle sections can be used angle sections for light weight um, transverse load angle sections may be provided. However, for this case unsymmetric building will come into picture which need to be take care 
and sometimes compound sections also we provide. Compound section means uh, combination of two sections. Say for example, this is an I section, steel rolled I section and along with that say if the compression is quite high compared to tension then we may provide sometimes channel section at the top right. So, this is called compound section which is made of two different section here it is I section and channel section combination of I and channel section. Then also we use composite beam composite beam means made of steel and concrete say for example this is one case this is I section and over the I sections we provide uh, the RCC slab or beam and connect with the shear connector we connect with shear connector this is called shear connector shear connector right and this is concrete so this type of section is called composite section this has certain advantages in the sense we know the concrete are um, good in compression and steel are in tension so when uh, the members are used under gravity load the beam members are used so then uh, it bends like this so bends like this means the compression occurs at the top and tension occurs at the bottom. So, if we use such, such type of uh, composite section then compression will be taken care by the concrete section and tension will be taken care by the steel. So, we can make advantageous use of the concrete properties and ten steel properties. Also sometimes we use encased beam, encased beam means we provide certain I section, then periphery of the I section we cast with concrete. So, this is also sometimes used. Sorry, say, sorry, this I am drawing once again. Say, I section and then it is casted like this. So, this is called encased beam. Encased beam. These are the concrete material and encased with uh, the I section, the, which is of steel. So, these are certain type of section uh, which we oftenly use for um, beam member right another section we can use that is suppose a cantilever beam is there having uh, certain u udl load now we can see the bending moment will be something like this that means bending moment will be maximum here and minimum here so, if we can, uh, if we provide a same section, that means we have to provide the section considering this bending moment, right. We have to provide the a particular section considering the maximum bending moment and throughout the section we use, which will be uneconomical. So, to make economical, we can provide uh, the cross uh, section, means section with varying cross section. So, that different way we can make one way is say, suppose we can provide a means we can consider a I section right we can consider a I section and then we can cut say this is an I section then we can cut this to this ok. So, if we cut it then we can make it reverse and then we can make it weld. So, if we do that we can see that uh, this can be made like this 
So, this is 1 and this is another one. Right. So, and in this phase the two sections are welded, right. This is welded. So, as a means this is basically called taper section. So, if we see the taper section that the along its length the cross sectional properties are increasing, cross sectional dimensions are increasing. So, if we use such type of uh, member in case of cantilever beam, it will be economical. So, another section is called means we provide which is called castellated beam. Here basically what we do say one I section we cut through its wave. So, this is an I section and we can cut this through its wave in this way. Right. Like this. So, this is a cut. Right. Now, these two sections if we can displace say this we can displace towards this and this we can displace towards this, then we can make a sections like this. So, what we can make this will become something like this. Okay. So, this will be opening in the wave, but what is the advantage? Advantage is that if we slide this two, then the depth of the cross section will increase. Right. If the depth of the cross section is increased, then the moment of inertia about I means about this direction will increase moment of inertia. If moment of inertia increase, then we know stress will be decreased because a stress is m by i into y. So, with the same section without increasing the material, if we reorientate this through cutting um, through its wave, then we can increase the moment carrying capacity. Right? We can increase the moment carrying capacity by increasing the value of i because moment carrying capacity will be sigma i by y. So, I am going to increase i by increasing the depth of the cross section of the material. So, this type of beam is called castellated beam right. So, this type of beam is called castellated beam. Now, this looks like this. So, here you can see uh, what I have shown is this one. First, we are cutting through its wave, and then uh, one we are sliding to this, and then we are getting this type of member, and we are welding in this. Right, through welding joint, we are making a single section, whereas the depth of this section will be higher than this, the original one. Though the weight of material will be same, this because this is same, but the uh, depth will increase and uh, if depth is increased then the section uh, um, properties like i the moment of inertia will increase. Another way of uh, making castellated beam is uh, while uh, making this we will insert a plate here right with a certain thickness and uh, depth right. So, if we insert this, then 
uh, we can see the length is becoming much much higher than the original one. So, through this I can achieve the uh, moment of inertia to a large extent right and here we need to weld to make it monolithic. So, this is one another example of castellated beam. Now, uh, we will find out some consideration for design of beams like when we are going to design a beam we have to consider that beam should be proportional for strength in bending keeping in view of the lateral and local stability of the compression flange because the compression flange have lateral instability may, can have. So, that has to be keep in mind. Now, the selected shape should have capacity to withstand the essential strength in shear and local bearing. So, whatever shape we will select because different type of shape we can select. So, that shape may be I section, may be channel section, may be other section that shape has should have capacity to withstand essential strength in shear because the uh, shear will be taken by the wave. So, wave thickness should be sufficient enough to take care the uh, shear force and local buckling. Then the beam dimension should be suitably proportional to stiffness keeping in mind their deflections and deformations under service condition. So, dimensions has to be made in such a way that uh, it should be means the deformations under the service conditions should be under uh, limiting value. Now, uh, another thing we have to see that different type of sections we have discussed that we can use channel section, uh, even we can use angle section or T sections also, but these type of sections have certain limitations like angles and T sections are weak in bending. So, unless the um, load is transverse load is less light uh, generally we do not go for angle section or channel section then uh, or T sections. Then channels only be used for light load light load that means, when the uh, length of the member is quite high, but load is less then such type in such type of cases we can use channel section. The rolled steel channels and angle section are used in those cases where they can be designed and executed satisfactorily. So, that has to be also keep in mind because this is because the load is not likely to be in the plane which removes uh, torsional eccentricity. So, uh, while using uh, such type of section we have to keep in mind that torsional eccentricity may come into picture. Also it is complicated to calculate the lateral buckling characteristics of this type of sections. So, we have seen here certain demerits of using channel section, angle section or T sections. Later we can see that in case of flexible member I sections will be the best one right because I sections are symmetric and uh, it can take both compression and tension equally. Therefore, uh, we will show later in next class that why I sections are best because its moment of inertia about the Z z axis is also quite high right. So, we can achieve the uh, greater amount of moment uh, of the section which can withstand the uh, large amount of load. So, today uh, we like to conclude here and next day we will see why I sections is better and then we will see what are the failure may come into picture and then how to uh, develop a design methodology. Thank you.